There were many individuals who contributed to the history and development of filmmaking and animation. During most of the 19th century, creating moving pictures was done by projecting many non-moving images rapidly. The idea of making continuous live-action film happened in 1872 when Edward Muybridge invented the Zupraxiscope. The motion picture camera and early versions of the projector caused the film industry to leap forward with new ideas. Thomas Edison's kinetoscope allowed for one viewer to watch short films 15 seconds to one minute in length. In France, 1894, the Lumiere brothers were the first to show large screen projected films using the cinematograph. The most famous of their films was the arrival of a train at La Ciotat station. While the film industry was developing, Walt Disney stepped in and changed film and entertainment into how we know it today. Throughout Walt's life of leadership and legacy, he left an impression on the animation and entertainment businesses today, and even American culture. Walter Elias Disney was born December 5, 1901 in Chicago, Illinois. He was one of five children of Elias and Flora Disney. In 1906, when Walter was four, the family moved to a farm in Marceline, Missouri. It was in Marceline where Walt developed his love for drawing. His early years growing up in a rural environment formed his beliefs and values that stuck with him throughout his life, which become evident in his many films. Walt and his family moved back to Chicago in 1917, and he attended school at McKinley High School. He began giving more attention to drawing and photography, contributing to the school paper, and at night he took courses at the Chicago Art Institute to improve his skills. Disney dropped out of high school at the age of 16 in hopes of joining the U.S. Army during World War I, but he was rejected for being underage. Instead, he joined the Red Cross and was sent to France for a year to drive an ambulance. When he returned in 1919, Walt moved to Kansas City to begin his artistic career. He began creating short animated films for local businesses in Kansas City. Around this time, Walt began experimenting with the camera and doing hand-drawn cell animation. Eventually, Walt decided to open his own animation business and start creating cartoons called Laughograms. These cartoons were a huge success and became very popular, and soon Disney was able to set up his own studio called Laughogram. Walt began to work on his cartoon series called The Alice Commons, which was about a real girl and her adventures in the animated world. Unfortunately, Walt ran out of money, and by 1923, Disney Studio was in huge debt and ended up closing due to bankruptcy. This failure did not discourage him, and instead of giving up, Walt went to Hollywood to continue his work on the unfinished Alice comedies and start a new business. Disney once said, Around here, we don't look backwards for very long. We keep moving forward, opening up new doors, and doing new things because we're curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Walt's brother, Roy Disney, was already in California. Joining their resources, they soon set up shop in their uncle's garage, the only studio they could afford at the time. With the help of his brother, Roy, Walt set up a proper cartoon studio two months after their arrival in Hollywood. This was the beginning of the Disney Brothers studio. Disney entered into a distribution deal with a New York distributor, Margaret Winkler, for his Alice comedies. He also invented a character called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. It was an instant success and was praised as exceptionally clever and showing fine cartoon ingenuity. In 1925, the name of the Disney Brothers studio was changed to the Walt Disney Studio. The same year, Disney married one of his employees, Lillian Bounds, and together they had two daughters, Diane and Sharon. In 1928, Disney realized that Universal Pictures bought the trademark for Oswald. After this, most of his creative designers had left him for Universal Pictures. Walt and his brother Roy worked together on creating a new character, Mickey Mouse. When sound made its way into film, Disney created the first cartoon to use synchronized sound. By 1927, filmmakers were learning how to produce sound as well as pictures on film. The short cartoon, Steamboat Willie, starring Mickey Mouse, was the first cartoon to use synchronized sound. Walt used his own voice as Mickey Mouse. It was a huge success, and Mickey Mouse's popularity grew rapidly in the early 1930s. There was no stopping Disney after Steamboat Willie. He made more Mickey Mouse cartoons. He created Silly Symphonies in 1929, which featured new characters as Mickey's friends, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. Audiences everywhere watched and loved Walt Disney's cartoon characters. Even during the Great Depression, the Disney studio continued to grow. Mickey Mouse became a symbol of hope that the human spirit could overcome obstacles. So far, all of Disney's cartoons have been made using black and white film. Now he wanted to experiment with color film. In 1932, 
His film Flowers and Trees was the first full-color cartoon ever made. It was an immediate success, and it won Walt the first of his studio's many Academy Awards. By 1937, Disney was ready for another experiment. Instead of making short cartoons, he wanted to be the first to make a full-length animated film. He based his film off the fairy tale Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This film ended up making more money than any other movie in Hollywood. The film earned $1.499 million, even in the midst of the Depression, and won a total of eight Oscars. In December 1939, a new facility for Walt Disney Studios was opened in Burbank. However, a labor strike occurred in 1941 and impacted the success of the studio. In the early 1940s, Walt Disney Studio made new full-length animated movies, such as Pinocchio, Fantasia, and Bambi. During World War II, Disney Studio made films supporting the war. These films sparked patriotism and boosted the morale of the country. After the war, Disney produced more animated films such as Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, and Sleeping Beauty. He also started making live-action films, exciting movies such as Treasure Island, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Swiss Family Robinson, and Parent Trap. Everyone watched Disney's films, both adults and children. Through Disney films, people saw not only a source of clean, decent entertainment, but also inspiration to explore one's limits and follow dreams. In the early 1950s, he began working on his idea of bringing his dream world to life. This world would be called Disneyland. Disney took advantage of television to promote his movies and his theme parks. For two years, Walt Disney worked non-stop on his new creation. When Disneyland Park opened in Anaheim, California on July 17, 1955, it was an immediate success. This fantasy world for both adults and children allowed visitors to engage themselves in cartoons rather than watching them on a screen. Disney's Main Street, USA is based upon the streets of small town America, specifically the buildings in downtown Marceline, Missouri. Visitors entering Disneyland followed Main Street, USA to the center of the park. Disneyland truly was a magical place for families to visit. Walt Disney never stopped improving Disneyland. He said, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. Walt began plans to build a second theme park in Florida. This would become Walt Disney World in 1971. Sadly, he did not see his Florida dream world become reality. Disney was sick with lung cancer and died on December 15, 1961. Roy Disney continued working on the Florida Walt Disney World Resort and it opened on October 1st, 1971. Today is the most popular vacation resort in the world. Walt's enthusiasm and faith in himself and others took him straight to the top of Hollywood society. The leadership he showed during his Hollywood career made him a pioneer in the development of the motion picture industry. Disney's accomplishments have forever changed animation and entertainment businesses and even American culture. The films people watch to find joy and comfort in times of depression and war are still watched by people around the world today. Disney's legacy has inspired people around the world to believe in their dreams and dare to pursue them.